ルをわきまえろ。We're back on Gorilla Filmmaking Channel today, and that was a video inspired by Jujutsu Kaisen, Sukuna. If you guys know, if you watch anime, you get it. If you don't, you're living under a rock, possibly. But yeah, this video was actually inspired by Diego Woods' version that I seen come online. And I just wanted to try and challenge myself by recreating something in my own way. And yeah, it was a challenge. But nonetheless, got it done. Shout outs to him and all the stuff he does. Big, big, big inspiration inside the community. But today on the channel, I just want to give you guys more of a quick breakdown, showing you some of the techniques I use and the stuff I did, interpreting what he did to kind of create it in my own way, adding a few extra things. But nonetheless, let's just dive into this video. Oh, yeah. And one other thing, we're going to be opening up a community for everybody to kind of get involved. And I'm going to be showing a lot of the procedural editing, the techniques that are used, the stuff that you really want to know that's going to help you go from zero to hero kind of a thing. But let's get straight into this video. And I'm just going to give you guys a breakdown scene by scene about the things I did to create what you've seen on the screen. So let's get into it. All right. So this was actually one of the first shots I started working on. And it was quite challenging at first because I was trying to understand exactly what Diego was doing. But once I figured it out, and got the ball rolling, it was pretty easy. And as you can see, there's just a few different things that you really need to do to actually get this effect to sell the way you want to. So for instance, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is rotoscope out the arm, especially when you're creating the arrow in the background, because you need something to obscure what's happening back here so it makes it look like it's connecting. But I'm gonna get deeper into that when I show you the other part of the video. Uh, one of the most important parts was actually making these flames look like they were coming from the fingers. And these flames are actually the same thing duplicated a few times. I learned this from Diego Woods especially. And then just retimed differently. And this is a pre-comp of everything happening. So I will actually go inside of this pre-comp over here. I think it's Firehand Front. Yeah. And as you guys can see, this is what's kind of going on here. Um... This is the same flame, the looping torch flame, and it's duplicated a bunch of times. And every time I duplicated it, I just pulled it further down the timeline to make sure that there was some variation with the fire so it all didn't look the same. So keep that in mind if you're doing this. You can actually make something look like it's not the same by just re-timing it. And I use this technique with a lot of stuff, so just keep that in mind. And as you can see, over here is actually the arm roto that we have, and we put the black fill on it. That's so that when we add the adding blending mode coming back out of here into the main comp, this actually becomes uh, completely transparent and the glow will bleed onto um, the actual arm inside of the clip. And then these are just the tracks that we used. Um, I can actually show you guys a few things inside of this part here. And if you guys wanna see, what we essentially did here was we ended up going to every finger in Mocha over here and you just use the spline tool and you draw around the fingers. And when you're done that, you just hit the track button and we just kept tracking each finger, as you can see, until I got the data that I needed to get to the next part. So, and we did the back finger too. And yeah, that's pretty much this part and how we got it done. I got a couple more just in case I needed them. But yeah, once I was done that, um, you go to create track data over here and then you select the layer that you're using and then you just rename each null so that each of those are labeled so you know which finger it's actually tracking because remember you're putting these you're putting the fire on all of the fingers individually so they need to have their own track so that it follows properly and now i'll go over to comping fire so as you can see what I did here is I grabbed the flame asset, brought it in, rotated it, and then we just move it around till we find somewhere in the scene where we want it to be. And then right over here, as you can see, when I was done that, I go to parent link and I parent it to each finger that I know was named what the tracking data was attached to. So, I mean, not too hard. And then we just keep duplicating it and then retiming the clips, like I said, until we find something that works with what we're trying to do. And you can add a lot of variation by adding flames that are not even there. And then right over here, as you can see, <clears throat> I use the mesh warp just so that we can change the way it looks and kind of fixate it to different parts of the hand to add some variation. So like I said, some cool, neat Diego Woods kind of tricks that I learned watching his stuff, really good stuff. 
And as you can see, I actually took one of the flames and I put it down underneath of the rotoscope layer just so that we can add some more depth to it where the fire is behind and stuff. And it actually hides a lot of the mistakes that you would try and do creatively to make something work. So that was that for that part. And then once I was done with all of this stuff, I'll just kind of fast forward and that's the backhand. Backhand, same idea. Don't make it rocket science. And then I brought in this asset here and I tried matching it. Yeah, I pre-comped it all together and then we turned that to the screen blending mode add. And once we did that right there, it makes this background transparent. And as you can see, now the flame's sitting on top. And from there, it's adding the tint so that the colors are all the same, the curves playing around with that in the alpha channel, optical glow, adding a color vibrance, and it'll give you something that looks like this. So, so this is actually what I did to finish up this shot. And as you can see, there's some heat distortion and stuff going on in the shot, and it's a luma mat. So the technique here actually is that when you duplicate this fire layer over here, on the second one, you're gonna actually add a fast box blur and I will actually solo and make this where it needs to be. So you add a fast box blur and that pretty much spreads out the pixels, right? And then you're gonna wanna add an exposure effect and this is what makes it brighter so that when you use a matte with the heat distortion, the heat distortion is only gonna take place where the luminance is. And if you spread this out, then that heat distortion is gonna only engulf the area where it's the brightest. And it's a more natural way instead of having to create an adjustment layer and a mask and put it on top, at least it's mimicking exactly what the frame, I mean, sorry, the flame does. So yeah, otherwise than that, that's pretty much it for this shot. Let's move on to shot number two. So the second shot I worked on was actually this close up and I thought it came out pretty damn cool. And there was a lot that I had to make up and go along with. So as always, um, the first thing we did um, was track the back hand because we needed something that the fire connected to. And then I created a hand mat, not really necessary, but regardless, I did it. Um, and then we have the eyes where it's actually reflecting the fire that's happening. And I can show you exactly how we did this. So if we go into this layer over here, there's a few things happening. First, we tracked the eye in Mocha, and then we attached that to the null over here. And then I created a mat of the eye. So this was actually a mat that I animated going over the eye. And then this second mat over here was just another mask that I used, and I'll show you. And I just increased the feather over here. So as you could see, if the eyelid was open or closed, it would have some kind of darkness, a shadow that it would put over the pupil. So I put that mask on top so that it would kind of emulate that same effect. So that's just a little trick for you guys to know. And then for this layer here, I actually took, remember this is from the fire hand layer. So this is the layer with his hand actually on fire. So what we did is we, we took that pre-comp and put it in here and then we created a mat with the eye and then we just attached it there, as you can see, right over here. And once it was attached as a mat, because I thought it would look cheesy if we just tried to shove it in the eye and make it reflect. But the cool thing about the CC sphere effect is that once you go over to your shading option over here, the reflection map, you just choose that pre-comp and then it puts that image inside of that sphere. So it kind of more so would be natural looking for the eye to be as a circle too and then to put that inside of the mat. And then, like I said, you just put these layers on top and I did the same thing twice for both eyes. And that's pretty much how I got the reflection in the eyes. And then for this fire over here, all I did and this is almost exactly similar to the clip we showed you before. So I pretty much took the spirit flame asset and I did the same thing I did with the hand flame. I just duplicated it a bunch of times and made it a 3D layer and then retimed it each time and then just put it on a different angle. And once I was done that, and if you come back to the close up, that's what gave me this effect here. And I copy and pasted the same effects. And I did this for all of the fire clips that we have here back onto here so that there's a consistency between how the effects looked. And then I just duplicated it. I disabled the layer, added an adjustment layer, and then we added a displacement map. And that's pretty much how we created this effect for the fire that you see inside of this clip. So that's just a cool little neat tip for how this was created. And again, this is all rinse lather repeat for these shots besides from the eyes, but that's how this shot was created. And then the side wide shot. I mean, this one was a tad bit trickier because the angle was so different. I couldn't really just do the same thing, especially with 
this part here. So what I actually did is, and I'll show you guys over here. So I 3D tracked the scene initially and didn't actually end up needing to 3D track, which is fine. But um, the next thing that I did was the same thing actually that I did for the main comp. And we tracked all the fingers in the shot. And then we started taking the flames and just posting them on each finger individually and played around with that until we found something we liked. And then, like I said, I used the mesh warp just to bend it and warp it to make sure that it fit onto the finger where I wanted it to. And then I brought in this asset and it looked good at first, but I just wasn't feeling it after. So I ended up going with um, Film Riot's um, Spirit Flame from their energy assets. And this just looked good. Put it to an ad blending mode, just repositioned it, attached it to the backtrack over here and duplicated it, pulled it back, retimed it. And then I used the mesh warp just so I can make it look like they're actually connecting because it wasn't long enough and I didn't want to stretch and distort it to the point where it didn't look good. So I just played with this with some keyframes and then I used the mask and feathered out some of the parts. And then I pre-comped everything together. And as you can guess, I copy and pasted all of the effects from the previous layers on this one. And that's what made it look more consistent inside of the clip. And then from there, what we did was play around with the assets a tad bit till we find something we like. Yeah, and that's how I pretty much got this flame to look this way. The next thing I did was add an optical flares. And from here, I was just playing with a few different assets till I found something that I liked. And then when I found that flare, I brought it in and then we just put it on that comp. And then what I did was I took some of the tracking data from the back finger and I actually pasted it inside of the clip over here so that I didn't have to manually track it and it looked like it was off. At least it followed the hand when it was going backwards. And the reason I used this flare was to make it look like it was launching the energy across the screen. As you could see, I just keyframed it going from the left to the right off frame and just repositioned the center position where the flare is to make it look good. And from there, you just play around with the color, the tint and stuff. And that's what gave me that effect. And as you can see, once I played with it for a bit, you have something that looks pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool in my opinion, pretty damn cool. Yeah, but then I added a CC radio blur to it and then I played around with the keyframe on that until I found something I liked. And that was just to make it look like there was more impact once the launch was set off. And then we added that famous negative frame. You see it in animes and in different sequences when hits are done. And then we just did it for one frame. And then right when the explosion goes off, sorry, the trajectory happens with the CC light burst also too. It's another one you can use. Um, yeah, it just made it look a lot better. So yeah, that was pretty much all I did for this shot in making it look good. Then I pre-comped it all together and we added a shake right around here. Production Crate's shake was really good for this. So I usually choose Jolt 1 or Jolt 3 and then just select the part on the layer you want it to happen. And then you just hit Jolt and then... Yeah, that's what gave me the shake. And then we added some dust assets. I forgot to say that. And just put some dust assets around there. Use an unmalt effect. Uh, it just looks like it blends better. Put a tint effect. And then I sampled the orange from the bottom over here. Made it a 3D layer. Pasted the position data from there. And yeah, that's pretty much how we got this to look the way that we did. And remember, just scale, reposition, change opacity and stuff like that. And play with it until you find something that you like inside of that clip. So yeah, that's the basic breakdown on how I got this shot done. I will go way more into depth when I open up the community and I will show you guys exactly piece by piece how I broke this down, but I think it'll get too long if I describe every last thing. And I will show you guys the last shot I worked on. I'm not gonna lie, I think this was the most complicated, but it was one of the coolest shots. Um, and pretty much how I did this was I added a few different layers together to create this, but I think I actually, where is it? All right, so for this last shot, it was Sukuna's flame when it's coming out of his hand. And this one was actually really tricky. And this one took me time. So play around with it until you find something that actually works for what you're trying to do. But what I did essentially was track both hands and then we needed that for the energy to follow both. And then what we did is we rotoscoped out the top hand and we needed this to obscure some of the energy asset that's coming from here to make it look like it's in the middle. And once I was done that part, I just started going through some assets from Film Riot again, sparks, some energy assets. And then I found some energy bombs that I really liked and I brought them in. And then I just started positioning them where I wanted them to be and then attaching them to the null that was relevant. So if it was on the bottom hand, we attached to the bottom null. And if it was at the top, vice versa. And then just rescaled and positioned, retimed it until I found something that I liked. And take your time with this because 
this is just creative work. You're not going to find something that works off the top. You're going to have to play with it until you figure out what's working. And then from here, I ended up finding some other assets like the chaotic energy and stuff and adding it in the middle and just keyframing the position. And then from here, I added um, the spirit flame, which was another good addition to make it look like fire was rising from here too. And just kept playing with it until I found something that I like. Like I said, you can just keep going all day with this. Oh yeah, then the embers was another important part because with fires, embers are gonna come out. And yeah, once I was done that, pre-comped it all together, put the black fill on the hand over there. And when you come back to the main comp over here, you just copy and paste the effects from the last one. And that's what really just blends and pulls it all together. So yeah, that's pretty much how I made this shot over here. But I mean, in a nutshell, a lot of this was just me playing with it, trying to figure out what works. I keyframed the actual color vibrance effect to change colors in between here so that it goes from like an orange to a red. And then I tried doing the reverse. But long story short, a lot of this was just trial and error and me trying new things to try and figure out how to interpret what someone like Diego Woods did without copying him completely. Because at the end of the day, it's great to be inspired and recreate things in your own way. But the problem with copying things is that you're not actually learning how to do anything unless you know why you're doing what you're doing. So in, in, in essence, like when you watch someone or a tutorial and it teaches you how to make a donut, if you don't understand why you're doing those things in that tutorial, then all you're gonna be able to make is a donut, which is why I'm grateful for having creators like this because they show these techniques and then you can apply it to the stuff you're doing to get the result that you want by just tweaking it a bit. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a quick breakdown on it. I can't make something that's like five hours long, but hopefully you find something in this that helps you. And if you need any clarification, just message me. This is Guerrilla Filmmaking. Love you guys all. Happy holidays and get out there and create shout outs to Diego Woods and everyone else out there that's inspiring the community. You guys, I will see you on the next one and stay tuned for the new community coming out. I will find you guys there. Peace.